Chapter 8, Learning Objective 4. Explain, calculate, and record revised depreciation for subsequent capital expenditures. The useful life and residual value estimates may change, and as a result, depreciation must be revised from the date of the change and applied going forward, which is also called prospectively. This is accomplished by employing the following formula where the revised depreciation equals the remaining carrying amount less any revised residual value divided by the estimated remaining useful life. Referring to our ongoing asset purchase example, with a purchase price of $20,000, a residual value of $2,000, and an estimated useful life of five years, the straight line depreciation for years 2022 and 2023 would be $3,600 per year, calculated as the $20,000 cost, less the $2,000 residual value, and divided by five years. And we already did this in Learning Objective 2. The carrying amount at the end of 2023 would be $12,800, or $20,000 less two years of depreciation of $3,600 per year. Alternatively, we could also say that the accumulated depreciation would be $7,200 at this point. Now let's say that effective January 1st, 2024, we want to calculate revised depreciation for 2024 based on some updates to both the residual value and the estimated useful life. Let's assume management has determined that the totally useful life of the asset should actually have been eight years instead of five years, and the revised residual value of the asset at the end of its eight-year useful life would be $5,000. So now we must calculate the revised depreciation using the formula as the remaining carrying value of $12,800 less the revised residual value of $5,000 and now divide by the remaining useful life of six years calculated as the total eight year useful life less the two years already in use. It's important to note here that there is a difference between the term estimated useful life and estimated remaining useful life. The former refers to the total useful life of the asset from when it was purchased and the latter refers to just that, the remaining life. So make sure that you read any questions carefully so you understand the wording of what's given to you. The revised depreciation at this point would then be $1,300, and at the end of 2024, the carrying value or net book value would be $11,500, calculated as a $12,800 beginning carrying value, less the $1,300 2024 depreciation. Companies can also incur additional capital expenditures related to an asset while it's still in use. We call these subsequent capital expenditures either an addition or a replacement. An example of an addition might be adding a garage, a warehouse, or new wing to an existing building. With an addition, depreciation is calculated separately and added with the depreciation from the original building. Let's say that our acquisition on January 1st, 2022 was for a building. And then on January 1st, 2023, an addition of $12,000 was added to the building. And there is no expected residual value of that addition, and the estimated useful life of the addition is 10 years. We would calculate the straight-line depreciation expense for 2023 in two parts, one for the addition and one for the original building purchase. For the addition, we would take the $12,000 cost less zero residual value and divide by 10 years to end up with depreciation of $1,200 on the addition. We already calculated the straight line depreciation of the original building to be $3,600, so there's no change there. Thus, the total depreciation for 2023 will be $4,800, calculated as $1,200 for the addition plus $3,600 for the original building. Now let's talk about replacements. An example of a replacement is, let's say, replacing the motor of an existing vehicle. The old motor would be scrapped and depreciation would be calculated on the carrying value after the removal of the cost and accumulated depreciation of the old motor component. Let's assume that our January 1st, 2022 capital expenditure of $20,000 was for a vehicle instead of a building and that all the other assumptions, including the same $2,000 residual value and five-year estimated useful life remain the same. Annual depreciation would still be $3,600 per year as calculated previously. And now let's assume that we depreciate the vehicle for three years to 2024 prior to an engine replacement on January 5th, 2025. Let's say that the old engine 
would have had an original cost of $8,000 if purchased separately at the time the vehicle was purchased and had a residual value of $1,000 and estimated five-year life. We would determine the accumulated depreciation of the old engine as follows. $8,000 cost less $1,000 residual value divided by five years or $1,400 per year and multiply by three years to end up with $4,200. We need this information to record the journal entry to dispose of the scrapped engine with a debit to accumulated depreciation of $4,200 and a credit to an equipment asset account for the original cost of the engine of $8,000. For debits and credits to balance on our journal entry, we need a $3,800 debit, which would be considered a loss on disposal. Illustrating with T accounts, we can see that the equipment account now has a balance of $12,000 after removing the original cost of the old engine, and the accumulated depreciation account includes three years of depreciation at $3,600 as credits, and then a debit in 2025 of $4,200 to remove the accumulated depreciation on the engine, resulting in an ending balance of $6,600. The revised carrying amount of the vehicle now is $5,400, calculated as a $12,600 remaining cost less $6,000 in accumulated depreciation. The revised depreciation on the remaining asset then is $5,400 less the $2,000 residual value divided by two years estimated useful life. That's the original five years less the three years used. We can then record the replacement engine that cost $12,000 with no salvage value and eight year life with a journal entry that debits the equipment asset and credits cash. Then we'll calculate depreciation on the new engine as $12,000 cost less zero residual value divided by eight years to end up with $1,500. The total depreciation for 2025 then consists of the $1,700 on the remaining original asset plus $1,500 on the new engine for a total of $3,200 we would record that depreciation expense with a debit of $3,200 and credit to accumulated depreciation for the same amount.